The great grandmother, Rapitamai of Parikshit Kunti, then cried, Jiva Goswami. Note. Jiva Goswami, he analyzes the words of the first line of the Sanskrit, Anusmitya Vachanam. And as in Sanskrit, it's a very rich language, and with many synonyms, it can have many meanings. And he presents us three meanings, which gives us a deeper insight of what's happening. The Chief Goswami repeatedly remembering Anusmitya, her parents and others, Svajanam, and Krishna as the Lord of the Universe. That um, so completely remembering our parents, others, and Krishna, who is the Lord of the Universe. Or another meaning. Or remembering Krishna, Krishna who was a friend, Svajanam, as Lord of the Universe. Very significant. Krishna is really our only friend. 
We move from body to body. We have so many friends, but they all disappear. But Krishna is our only friend. That's the reality. That, um, so, remembering Krishna, Dai was the Lord of the universe as a friend. She became sad because she could not attain him. And then cried with choked voice. Pra, yeah, pra Ruda. She was your great grandmother. So if he says the expression. And she had such an affection for Krishna. You are fortunate to be our grandson. Sukadev was Raman. Says this to increase Vaikshi's bliss. So, Maharaj Vaikshi was feeling bliss, going to sleep soon his body, but, but it, it increased his bliss. He used the word Bhavatam, your, in a plural, out of great respect. Enjoy calls out, O King. And now we have text 15, which is on the board, we, and we can happy together. Samadukha sugokhuram Vidura sammaha yasa Santvayam asu asatu kuntim Tat putro patihe to be Samadukha sugokhuram Vidura Samaha Yasu Stand by an Asuta Kuntim Tat Putro Pati to be Samadukha Sukokhuram Vidura Samaha Yasu Sant Sant Payam Asuto Quintim Tat Puto Pati to be we do I am that Sāma-dhuvā-sukā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-dhuvā-d
translation Dukha in distress, Sukha and happiness, Akura Akura, Pidura Pidura, Sha and Mahayasa, most famous. Dant Vayam Asutu. The two of them consult. Kuntim Shimati Kunti Devi. Dant Vayam Asutu. Of the sons. Udpati. Of the birds. A to B. With explanations about the origins. Both Akura, who shared Queen Kunti's distress and happiness, and the illustrious Vidura consoled the Queen by reminding her of the extraordinary ways her son had taken birth. Akura and Vidura reminded Queen Kunti that their sons, sons were born of the heavenly gods and thus could not be vanquished like ordinary mortals. In fact, an extraordinary victory awaited the most pious family. Now we have Sotka, Purport of Vishnachika Vakti Dakum. He and Vidura consoled her by reminding her of the cause of the birth of her sons, that is through Dharma, Vayu, Indra, and the Ashvini Kumaras. Describing the Pandavas' powers, they said such things as being expansive of Dharma and others, who could possibly destroy them? Shiva Goswami comments. The word Shahir means but. Vidura, however, was very famous as a friend of the Pandavas who sided with them. And no harm could come to the sons since they were born of the best Devatas. In this way, they consoled her, or they consoled her by mentioning the Pandavas appeared to, to, to assist Krishna when he appeared to leave the burden of the earth, this was the cause of their appearance. Mr. Tanatan goes on me, comments, and he wrote, sharing her happiness and distress, Akura was most affectionate to Kunti. Vidura by nature favored the Pandavas. Thus he is called greatly famous Mahayasa. Thus they both consoled her. Or both shared their happiness and distress, but were famous for qualities like self-control. Thus thought the two should have wept with her. Thus thought the two should have wept with her, but they controlled themselves. For having all knowledge, Mahayasa, they knew about the birth of the sons. Since the sons were born of the best devatas, no calamity could befall them. Soon they would have great fortune. What is the use of these talks? Or the cause of their birth was to help Krishna to relieve the burden of the earth and spread bhakti. Om Ajnana Dimanda Syajnana Sanasana Kyan Saksan Militam Yena Tasmai Si Kukapainama Sit Chaitanya Manu Vistam Stak Tam Yena Bhutani Shvamur Kadam Yamdada Tisham Kamantikam Bandhyam Siyo Siyo Dha Padakamnam Siyo Vaishnavamsa 
So we have here Sukadev Goswami speaking to Anas Brexit that, that and he's reminding Anas Brexit Kunti was your great friend that so Sukadev Goswami is not only glorifying Maharaj Pariksit, his disciple, but he's also glorifying all his family members. That reminded me, you have been born in such a dynasty of exalted pure souls, the devotees, pure devotees of Krishna. That and he's reminding him that his great grandmother, Kunti, what did she do, do during the greatest calamities? That uh, she took shelter by crying out to Krishna. That, uh, so the Pandavas, we know, they were, of course, blessed by the Lord, <coughs> but they had to undergo so many difficulties. Pandu himself died at an early age, that he was cursed. That's a whole story. If we look at other family members like Bhishma Dev, the great grandfather, that uh, out of devotion for his father, he took such a terrible vow and he renounced his heritage of being the emperor of the entire world. At, uh, at, uh, so Queen Kunti, she was a widow, and she had, she had to raise her five children. And she raised her children in an atmosphere where, where there was so much envy that uh, Envy and hatred towards our own children. That, and, and what was their only fault? There, there were pure and dedicated devotees of Lord Krishna. And because there were pure devotees of Krishna, all good qualities were manifesting in them. That, and Krishna empowered them in extraordinary ways. And, and because, because they were so virtuous, they were pure, and they naturally were loved by, by everyone. Yeah. And Krishna empowered them to do such wonderful things. 
So if we surrender to Krishna, then Krishna will use this as his instruments of his mercy. That uh, So Krishna has wonderful qualities and he can reveal many of his wonderful qualities to us. And that is just what he did with the Pandas. That. And, uh, and seeing their exalted qualities, their ca exalted characteristics, that, and the love and fame they were acquiring in their own humble way. Doyodham, Dushasam, Sakuni, Tritarashtra, they became very numerous. So, instead of admiring how they, these souls were blessed by the mercy of the Lord, they became intolerant. And they wanted all recognition to be theirs. But the Pandavas, they did not want any recognition. They didn't want to get any recognition for themselves. They wanted all glory to God to push them. And because of their utmost humility, they were endowed, endowed with transcendental powers. Yes. And what was the result of Duryodhan and others becoming envious of the Pandavas. What was the result? All their good qualities were destroyed. Here are the Gopinathas. That, uh, that, that's the result of becoming envious of the good. So they try to murder the Pandavas. They try to burn their house. They try to poison them. They exile them. But, but Kunti, she was always praying and crying out for the shelter of Lord Krishna. So the same emotions of this world, if they are directed towards Krishna, they become a source of spiritual bliss. That, um, the gopis, they were crying out to Krishna. That, um, and they became so deeply absorbed in Krishna. Queen Kunti, he had, she had, Parental affection towards Krishna. I think it's an inactive of devotion. Of course, the one who has the most uh, parental affection, the most intense parental affection for Krishna is Mother Yasoda. And then after that, Rohini. That, uh, but, yeah. Kunti is also in the list uh, that uh, mm. but people generally they do not understand the higher signs of spirituality. They cannot understand this. They think that becoming emotionless is the real attainment of the touching. No emotions. To simply be indifferent to everything. That, uh, becoming like a piece of stone, indifferent to everything. That, uh, so, to make our heart like a stone is certainly not the eternal nature of our soul. Our heart is 
it's not to become more hard, but spiritual life means making your heart soft. That uh, to be just completely detached, aloof, insensitive, not caring, that's the hardening of the heart. That uh, we often find bad people who perform tapasya, austerities, and who do not ex execute their voice in service or bhakti. Their practice makes their heart harder. That. And for them, if they see that if someone is crying, they think, oh, this person is in, is, is in illusion. The influence of Maya, illusion, and reason. Why are you crying, they say. That. It means you have attachment. That you are feeling sorrow. This means you are absorbed in the world of duality. This means you have, you have still desire. And you must kill all desire, they think. Of course, that is not bhakti. Bhakti means stop telling our desire with Krishna. With Krishna's desire. But here we find one of the greatest transcendental realized souls, Kuntideva. It's an illustrious lady and the mother of the Pandavas, and she's sweeping. She's crying. Tears are flowing from her beautiful eyes. And her heart, her heart is actually suffering grief. But her condition of consciousness has passed, far, far, far passed the state of detachment from this world. Her weeping and crying was because she was so much attached to Krishna. Because she was so much attached to Krishna, so much attached to Krishna's devotees. And naturally, in such attachments, she was completely detached from all selfish conditions. That uh, And she was free from all egoistic conceptions of mind. She was actually on the highest level of liberation. Her grief was an expression of her pure, unmotivated love for Krishna. In fact, all the emotions of the, this world have their origin in divine love. All emotions. Because everything originally is in Krishna and God. And everything in its essence, in its original state is pure because it is emanating from the pure soul. So we have all these qualities, but we have to purify them. That, uh, like greed. Greed, we, we mostly see as yeah, a bad quality. But what is purified greed? That greed is factually the pure quality of the soul. What is pure, selfless, unmotivated greed? That, that is to render more and more service for the pleasure of, of God. To render more service. That, uh, that is transcendental greed. And then lust. What's the real lust? The spiritual lust is to be yearning to be reunited with Krishna. That, um, so this is the original lust. 
And Srila Prabhupada said, this is dormant in everyone's heart, this love of God. And angry. What does it mean to be transcendentally angry? That um, we become angry because our egoistic desires are unfulfilled frustration. That, uh, but that is material anger. But anger against hearing the discredit discrediting of blasphemy of the Lord of his devotees, that's an expression of love. That, uh, and Queen Kunti here is suffering grief. Grief to see the suffering of other living beings. Grief to feel the separation of Lord of the Lord in our life. So when these natural, eternal, spiritual emotions of the soul, when they are coming contact with our false ego, our false concept that we are this body and this mind, these temporary co coverings, which are called a hunger, then they become polluted, impure. They become the source of material suffering, which has no ecstasy at all. And this false ego implicates us in all kinds of karmic activities. It creates terrible bondage, confusion, illusion. Therefore, we want to free ourselves from all this uh, bad character characteristics. That, uh, because they are causing us bondage, they are causing this birth, death, old age, disease, the cycle of birth and death. So the the path of bhakti is it's not annihilating our natural emotions that but it's purifying them. So we want not to become desireless. We want to give up material desires or which means purify them, dovetail them for Krishna's pleasure. That, um, I think this is a very important message here that we learn from the example. We Any questions? You mentioned that the highest branch of love is a fountain of the Yatona. And then in uh, Mother Rohim, but uh, I meet uh, Nanda Maharaj, where he comes from the third place. Yeah, he comes from the third place. That, um, that because Rohini, Rohini is also the mother. That, um, and, and the mother of yeah. But they were, was Krishna and Balaram were raised like in a joint family. For them, Ruini or Mother Yosona was their mother. Yeah, that. Of course, sometimes Ruini, their mood was a little different. That, uh, then, yeah. And then, once Krishna was, uh, if I remember correctly, he was, he was playing and Mother Yasuda came that, uh, so, Dhammada, you should come. Lunch is ready. And she went three times, but he didn't come. But then Mother Ruini went. 
Oh my Krishna, please come to count your your lunch is ready, please come. And he came immediately. Because I'll tell you said this because Mother Yasoda called him Damodar, bound with ropes. And so and Krishna, and Krishna doesn't like that. <laughs> and, 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 and if they call him Damodar, it's like he's he has done something wrong. Right, he's been punished. And then Mother Raina came. Anyway, uh, that's a detail I remember. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yes, uh, in this list of them, of course, Nana Maharaj is there, and then later also um, Devaki. And then, um, yeah, it's uh, different with. Of course, at the end, there are also the gopis, elder gopis, there are also, and also parental affection gopis. And also, Balaram, he had some parental, uh, but he was an elder boy. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Thank you. Something else? That means he should not call Krishna No, no, the, 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 that's well, in it, you can call Krishna Damodar, but uh, not yet, maybe, maybe, maybe not so much when you are the mother of Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. You spoke about the different bread qualities that we may have and how to purify them. Mm -hmm. And then, um, what about envy? Is a way to purify envy? Can you see? Yeah, it's shown. Um, envy means uh, how to purify envy. That this devotee is much better than me, and I want to become like this devotee. I want to develop all this better conscious. This devotee is much better. That's good envy. But I also want to become pure, like the others. That um, envy means you have something, but um, I don't have it. I feel so evil about it. So if someone has spiritual qualities and is spiritual advanced, and you are envious in the sense, I want also to develop this this qualities. I also want to serve Krishna better. That um, that's helpful. It seems like in the in the case of the uh, of the Pandavas, I mean, they wanted actually not to have their good qualities, not to be like them, because they really wanted to destroy them. They wanted to get rid of their existence. But there are different types of enemies in that. The envy of wanting to have this focus and some completely not having the person with their qualities around and some of the pain that is existing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. But for us, I was just studying that point what you are mentioned. Well, that you are mentioning yesterday, uh, that you are men mentioning now, and just was studying that. Um, in interesting is um, if how can you know that someone is without envy that. Uh, The, the point is that and that's very important to understand about envy. It's mentioned in the fourth canto, chapter eight, text thirty-four, where now the moon is instructing the Maharaj in saying 
if a gentle person meets someone who is more advanced, he becomes happy. This person is more advanced. And when one is equal, then um, one makes friends with, friendship with this person. And if a gentle person meets someone who is less qualified, he tries to elevate a person. But a person who has envy in his heart, that um, he meets someone more qualified and he tries to bring this person down, or is not separated. And if one meets and if an envious person meets someone who is equal, he starts to boost and explain how good he is and what his achievements. So I'm better than you. And if an envious person means meets someone who is less qualified, then he says this person is nothing and puts that person down. That, uh, but that's now the money said yeah, to do much. This is a gentle person. You should act as such. That uh, but uh, how can you know you are becoming a gentle person, a non-envious person? How can you know? That uh, what is a symptom? An interesting one symptom is that. If someone glorifies their bodies and sees the good qualities in them and glorifies them, that qualities which he does not have, and he glorifies the good qualities in other devotees, then that's a sign of being non envious, that seeing the good qualities. And that's a challenge. We may not go along with all the all devotees. We may remember, oh, this devotee has done that to me and this and that. But even with devotees, which we are not going difficulty with, we should try to glorify them. And they have also good qualities. And glorify them. Glorify them. That, uh, so that because if we see the good qualities in all the devotees and glorify them, then we start to develop the same good qualities in our heart. And, and that's an important point. And, and do you down and do shasan and Sakuni and all this. And, um, all this goes from one to its third and give difficulties to the Pandava. They had not these qualities. And we see here in this part, that I grew right son to Astinapur to. Uh, Krishna gave him this mission. He said, you go to Astinapur and check out the situation there. I think the Pandavas are in trouble. I want to, to report you to me how is how Dhritarashtra is teaching them. And Akrura here, he went to Astinapur and it took three, four months and he spoke with every, everyone and he found out his envy of Doryodhan and so on, and Dhritarashtra also. He was not equal to, to everyone. And, and he got the information mainly, mainly from Vidura, from Kunti, which are mentioned here, that uh, he got the information. And then at the end of this mission, that will be at the end of this chapter, 
Then he's going to Dhrita Rastra and he's, he tells him uh, politely, uh, you should treat your all your subjects equally. If you as a king are not doing that, then the, that's a great impious act and in your next life you will suffer many lifetimes. That one. So you should treat them equally. That this is the, the legal heritage of the Pandavas. And you should respect that. But what did Tita say? He said to Akura, your advice is like the nectar of the gods entering my ears. It's such a good advice, but that nectar is going to my ears and my heart, but it cannot stay in my heart, that advice. It's like, it's going to my heart like a lightning to clouds, from clouds. It cannot stay there in my heart. <coughs> Because out of attachment to my sins. Because the Tarashita was born blind. And as, as a blind king, you cannot go and rule the people, and you cannot defend them. Nothing you can do. So there was this frustration. And he wanted to rule to his sons, wanting his legacy to his sons. That uh, attachment. Hmm. But that's a bit. I don't know if that helped. Hmm. Yeah. Something else? I don't know if I'm noticing something, nothing, but I was just wondering if there's a reason because it was probably uh, mentioning the life prediction about his great grandmother, and he tells that she's meditating on her relatives and also on Krishna. It seems like the other way around that usually we'd say you're thinking of Krishna, and so it seems like the priority is the family members and also Krishna. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a reason he puts it in that order. Yeah, that's uh, we can approach only Krishna through his devotees. And that may be a good reason that therefore association with devotees is more important than association with Krishna because without association of devotees, we become a devotee. And bhakti doesn't work outside of the association of the world. And that is known that um, therefore Queen Kunti, she was attached to, to her sons. But her attachment was not like a family member in this world to her sons. Her sons were the good that, And therefore he was attached to them. She was attached to them. That, uh, and she could not, uh, she was grieved because of their distress. But actually, this Queen Kunti is on a very high level. And it is always an expression of love. It's, uh, and it's an experience of spiritual bliss. That uh, it's not grief in this world, it's suffering. But there's suffering was bliss. And that is many many times misunderstood. She did the of us, they are suffering so much. But people may think if I become a devotee of Krishna, look, that's what's going to happen with me. That uh, I met a devotee in Spain and, and he's from India. And he, he told me when 
Well, uh, model was an devotee of Lord Shiva. And when, when he became a devotee, and he started to chant the Hare Krishna my mantra, his mother said, I don't want to hear it. This Krishna gave me only trouble. And and this, and he said, and when when she was leaving her body, when she was passing away, I was chanting the Hare Krishna my mantra so that she could hear. And we were head still. Before leaving our body, she was doing like that. I don't, I don't want to hear. But, uh, but, but this is a misconception. Well, Lord Shiva is asked to us, he's very, very easily pleased uh, for material benefit. But Krishna is not so easily pleased. One must surrender. But when one surrenders, one is in Krishna's protection. That, um, but it's not so easy. That, um, but that surrender it, um, <coughs> means also surrender to his pure devotees. That, um, well, that's important. The, this is the practice of bhakti is going to the devotees and to the representatives of Krishna and the spiritual ones. That, uh, and this, this is Krishna. Krishna gives the he, he gives the power of atoning to uh, the Pandavas to the his pure devotees to represent Krishna and to give his mercy. That, uh, mm. Yeah. Could we say that the uh, mature energy is uh, destructive and spurba energy is created? Like that, because like Billy Taras, he was uh, envious of his brother that he became king because he was blind. And so everything what he did afterwards was like a destructive. That is certainly like very destructive. Envy. That, uh, but of course, in a higher sense, because that's a little bewildering, this pastimes of pastimes of Krishna, that uh, Krishna engaged his few devotees in taking a certain role in, our past, in, in his pastimes. And do you down? that uh, the most evil person, he was practically a pure devotee of Krishna. But he was engaged by Krishna to take the bad role. And that's what Bhujan Prabhu said at the end of the Bhagavatam quote, that when Krishna winds up his pastime, this is Krishna's pastime, as a roadshow going from one universe to another. And when the show is over, they take all of their custom, their, their, they take all of their, and their uh, customs, their, yeah, all their coverings, and go to the next. And we see that also, that Jai and Vijay cursed by the so-called, by the for Kumaras, but their desire was to give the Lord a good fight. And therefore, the Lord said, yeah, okay, that's... And he gave them the possibility to get three or seven birds, seven birds of the rose of three devotees as demons. And, and, and you, you will remain Krishna conscious always meditating on me in, in intense anger. That, uh, and yeah, it, it is like that. The Tritarasta Duryodhan are uh, Krishna's devotees, but they are to play with at home. To instruct us, 
to instruct us how how destructive this envy is. That uh, yeah, yeah, that's. But uh, all this uh, demonic qualities, which are mentioned in the sixteen qualities in the sixteen chapter by Bodhita, all these are destructive. Shri Prabhupada says about anger, you become angry, angry and it, it, it uh, immediately affects your, your chest, your, your body, so many negative effects on your health already, it's just become, becoming angry, uh, becoming angry. And uh, envy, the same thing, it are uh, negative emotions, it it's, uh, poisons the mind, makes the mind immediately you, your enemy. That um, it degrades you. That because it makes your mind an enemy. That's what Krishna says. That um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if the mind you can elevate yourself or degrade yourself, the mind can be your enemy or your friend. So the mind uh, filled with all these demoniac qualities, you become that it's your enemy. It's your, it, and, and of course, we see the immediate effect. Such a person with such qualities quality, will never feel satisfied in heart. It has an immediate effect, but then the further effect is you, it makes you taking birth and birth again in demoniac species. So it's very dangerous. The devotees are always conscious about the subtle effects of my consciousness, the effects of my, my consciousness. It's going to degrade me. Degrade means you. And most people in this world are like that degraded because they see only the body and the mind and what and what, what I see that exists and what's about what's outside of that and don't accept only what I can see and believe that uh, but there are certain laws of material nature. Yeah, one cannot understand uh, the, the subtle, and the most subtle is the spiritual. One loses all capability to understand things as they are. Thank you. Something else? Good. Thank you very much. Jantaran Simon Bhagavatam ki. Yeah. Lila Bhagavatam ki. Yeah.